All right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Osmica here. It's going to be your Saturday, 1 o'clock Central Time special sit rep. Uh, typically, you would not do this on Saturday, but uh, we had to kind of juggle some things around because I had a uh, family matter I had to take care of on Friday. So, uh, so we're just kind of doing a recovery here. Um, without further ado, let me jump over the boards. Make sure you guys hit that uh, like, subscribe, and bell for notifications so you guys get all of my stuff as it comes up. Uh, but get over to the board right now. Uh, it's actually kind of a heavy day. We're sitting at about 135 up. You normally don't see that many up on a Saturday. So we're going to take a closer look, probably run a little over the 30 minute mark, uh, just based on what I've got uh, up and ready for discussion. So that said, um, we do have, you guys can see, this is going to be your uh, night watch that is up right now, Spice 98 over the center continental United States. Um, now, keep in mind, we do have a military exercise going on right now, but I will tell you that it is the largest naval exercise in 41 years. And we're going to look closer at that at the tail end of this, because a reason I point out the naval exercise, even though they collaborate across, you know, all of the, um, the branches um, in terms of military force here in the U.S., um, I don't know that this stuff is related to that per se. Okay. Uh, I do see some heavy training going on here, uh, here at you know Southern Texas, but uh, we'll look closer here in just a second. Like I said, now items of interest as we look over what we have, um, we're sitting uh, on this one here. This is a Sam uh, 976, which rolled out of Maryland this morning. And a reason I point that out now, this is a blue and white, so this is one of your presidential planes, or you know, I, I say presidential planes. It's one of the executive fleet. Uh, but I'm not sure where this bad dude is going. He's at 38,000 feet right now, headed toward Alaska, but uh, he may be heading across the drink, or they may. Now, I don't know if this is Secretary of Defense. Who is on this? No clue. Could be anybody. Um, I will tell you that Flashbang is at his home base of operations, which is up there in, in uh, Delaware. So um, more than likely that SecDef is on that one, but... Uh, just wanted to point that out. That was one of interest. And then, of course, we've got our uh, our Hoover bird our, that uh, came out of, well, it's actually in Delta, Colorado right now. But uh, that was actually one of our R-135s that actually departed out of Las Vegas, headed over here to Delta, Colorado. So uh, we'll see if he comes back on the board. But uh, I was watching him earlier, thinking he was getting ready to go out and do something fun. But looks like he just went over here and landed. So maybe it's not that much of an interest. All right, uh, let's look at the volcanic activity real fast, too, while we're going through this. Uh, one thing I will point out, this was kind of interesting. Notice that these two, now this is uh, Russia, okay? These two are spewing big time. Like these, if you look at the size of the ash uh, and the direction it's going, that's a lot. That's a pretty big swath for a volcanic uh, eruption. The other thing I wanted to point out, there are some other volcanoes going on that haven't made the ash alert yet. Uh, we have our normal stuff. Now this one is in Mexico, which is a new one. That's uh, not one we've seen in a while. And then uh, here, this is kind of another one, up here in Bogota, Colombia, we've got the Ruiz that is actually going. And, uh, and then these others, uh, it's kind of wild to see these these all coming online. It's um, And then just in Southern Peru, that one's Kind of new now this one actually actually a new one too these are not ones we've normally seen so um kind of a looks like they're all just firing like uh <laughs> at will so uh keep an eye on this because it's important if you guys will notice in my monkey minutes when i talk about the volcanic activity going on around the world right now there's 42 of them that are actually active which is an unprecedented number so keep an eye on those um, but again, this one in Russia. Now, I wanted to point out here in Alaska as well, we've got three erupting in Alaska, uh, spewing lava and or ash clouds. Uh, here's a, a picture of those. And that was actually two days ago. All right. So it's not on our on our ash alert, but uh, it just goes to show just they're just stacking up. So uh, those are game changers, especially for aviation, because if that stuff gets in the air, not only can it change our climate and cool the planet and do kind of weird stuff, but also prevent us from flying around. So, uh, cause that stuff is wreaks havoc on, on a uh, jet engine. So, all right, we'll get off the volcanic stuff here. Let me just pop up real fast just to show you what's going on relative to the TFRs today. Uh, we do have this one. I'm going to pump in here in just a second. 
I'm not sure what that is. I think that's actually uh, the rocket. So that, that'll be the missile test range there. White Sands, I think. Uh, we'll get in closer and see. Now, here's one that's, so that's your brown zone, your regular stuff we see. And of course, VIP, which is over uh, Flashbangs area. So he's up there in the Wilmington, Delaware um, for the weekend. All right. Now, this was what we saw last time. Now, this is White Sands right here. This is your actual test range. And this is the area that we keep seeing pop off to the right. I don't know if it was tied to uh, Branson stuff, but I will tell you the last time we saw this, I saw several aircraft came that, that came into this area, did some reconnaissance, and then rolled back out. So I don't know what they have going on here. Uh, it could be related to missile launches uh, like Virgin or or one of the other independents. Uh, not sure, but typically it's stuff is handled out of here, which is White Sands. Um, you can see it here in Missile Test Center. Okay, so that's going to be our main TFR. So let's get over here. Let me just show you what's going on. Now, I did see somebody in the comments a minute ago talking about a med bird that actually popped into the board here uh, in, I think it's this one right here, N80LJ. That is, we have an N65LJ that also shows up from time to time. Coming out of Tampa, uh, that's going to be your medical bird right there. And so you can see it flagged as medevac, okay? All right, and so that popped in on Thursday. Uh, and then we didn't hold our, our normal sit rep yesterday, and so we had, of course, this um, 631JS, which is our little uh, operator puddle jumper deal. Um, that one's been back and forth a couple times. We'll look closer at that in a minute. And, of course, we have our, our Legal Eagle Uber that came in. So that's going to be for Friday, and Norfolk is going to be a supply run. Uh, interesting thing, if you notice on the board that we've start we've started to shift back to the Norfolk runs. Uh, that for a little while was Charleston, South Carolina. It looks like they've, they've, it was maybe a temporary thing because I'm starting to see the Norfolk stuff back on. So, which was normal. That's been that way for a couple of years. Okay. Okay. So there is that. That's going to be Guantanamo Bay. Now let's get over to the birds that are associated with this. Uh, you're going to notice this one's coming out of Nassau, Bahamas, back over to Tampa and landing in 17 minutes. Um, let me just double check here and then it looks like it's headed back to base at uh, Lauderdale and then it's going to go up to Gainesville, Texas. All right. From there, that's actually scheduled for tomorrow. Now, if you go back a little bit, you can see this thing has been over, uh, let's see, that's, uh, that's last weekend. So we, we won't go back that far. All right. Cause we've already covered that. So, uh, sister ship 302AZ rolled out three days ago from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And uh, let's see, Lauderdale, so that, that was on Tuesday. So this one hasn't been flying in a couple of days. My guess is that uh, in the last three days, it's probably down for maintenance. Probably well overdue for maintenance based on the amount of flying we've been seeing it go through. So, uh, so this one's probably down in Lauderdale for maintenance for a couple of days. And 631JS, now that one we did just see on the board. You can see that last flight there as well, coming out of Guantanamo Bay back to Cuba. Uh, let me see prior to that. So it went, yeah, it was just a round robin there. And then Thursday. So our last hookup was on Wednesday. So Thursday it went to, uh, up there near Jacksonville in Florida and uh, just South of there over to Boca and back. So that one's kind of, uh, been our, our frequent flyer in and out of the spa. And I imagine maybe it's filling in the spot for 302 AZ. And then this last one here, I just wanted to point out because this one has, has uh, shown up at the spa at one point. From time to time, I just kind of check in on them and see what they're up to. Uh, but this is LN989AW. In the past, that LN right there usually indicates a medevac flight as well, okay? And uh, this thing's been down in the Bahamas. It's been kind of all over the place. You look, it was on the 24th of June back over here in the Port-au-Prince, uh, Haiti, which, uh, you know... All that stuff flying in and out of this little area kind of makes you a little suspect to begin with. So, uh, but it looks like it was over in Bahamas on the 30th and then, uh, sorry, that's July 30th. And then here on August 3rd, it was in Denver, Colorado. It's been out to Seattle, up to Anchorage, and then looks like it's back to Seattle. So it's doing some West Coast stuff right now. Again, these are all birds that are associated with the spa. So we just kind of keep an eye on them because You'll see them do some things that'll get your attention and then, uh, you know, through either a news cycle or 
they'll just pop back into the spot. And it's always good to know where they've been so you can kind of connect the dots. Uh, one of the Phoenix Airs just landed an hour and 23 minutes ago. Looks like it's over. Uh, took off out of Rammstein over to Stuttgart in Germany. And uh, just a quick hop. All right. And then we're going to get into our immigrant birds. And so this is where it starts to get pretty interesting because during the week we watch these and they seem to get livelier on the weekends. So if you're looking at what we have up right now on that board, which is quite a few flights, that's actually happening as we speak. So these things are all in the air. Um, and you can look and see, you've got a border town here. You know, that's their headquarters there, headed into Tulsa. Uh, quite, quite a bit of flying for a weekend. Now, this one's coming out of Columbus, headed to Alexandria. Now, remember, Alexandria is a 72-hour uh, ice staging facility operated by a third party. This one's coming out of, I want to say that is Mexico. Again, notice that the, there's no destination logged. Um... Miami to Cancun, and then these are both uh, uh, over here in Dominican Republic. And then this one's going Miami over to uh, Dominican. Actually, that's, um, where is that one right there? Uh, Las Americas, I'll have to look on the map here just to be sure. But yeah, these things are, they're pretty active on the weekend. And I'll show you, you can see them stacked up here on the map. Uh, boy, that's a lot of flying. So if you kind of hover over them, we can see their destinations. Seems like a lot of them are heading into, this one's headed into Alexandria. But yeah, pretty pretty busy. This one's headed out of Miami into Cancun. That's where that one was, all right? And then these are all, look at these backed up coming out of this general area, which is, uh, you know, this is Dominican Republic over here. So yeah, stacked up. You got four of them in and out of the islands over there. Okay, so that's going to be Swift Air. Now we're going to kind of get into the nitty gritty of what they are flying because I was catching them earlier. As you'll see, this one's coming out of uh, South America. And let me just double check what we had. So that's coming out of Brazil. All right. And I don't see, it doesn't have anything. So it's still en route. Looks like it's landing up here. But go on. Uh, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that general area, but so it looks like it's coming out of Brazil up to here, which is probably picking up more people and then headed, headed inbound. So they're taking folks from all around the world. It looks like, and you can see this one here. Uh, if you go back to Friday, it was in El Salvador, went to Alexandria. So remember now, remember their, their story is they're telling you that they're taking people out of the country. That's what ICE is telling you. And that the 72 hour holding facility, according to the media, is uh, coming out of Alexandria and taking people uh, out of the country. So here we've got this one inbound coming from uh, El Salvador to Alexandria. All right. Uh, and then in the afternoon, it's headed out of Alexandria out to Guatemala City, which I would guess they're probably going to pick up some more folks. Now, if you'll notice, there is nothing connecting it. The next flight for that, that aircraft is actually here down in Brazil, the one we're tracking right now. So somehow it got over here from Guatemala down into Brazil, but there's no, there's no record of the flight, right? So that's one of those NA to NAs that they like to do or block flights uh, where they don't want you tracing them. So, okay, so there's no record of that one. I guess we call those ghost flights, okay. Now this is 531 AU, landed 21 hours ago out of Alexandria, um, which is our 72 hour holding facility down to Brownsville, all right? Now, prior to that, on Friday, it was up in Chicago, into Wichita, then from, looks like it went from Wichita, Kansas, down to Alexandria. So they are moving folks at a, at a rapid pace. I mean, this is, this is a pretty sophisticated supply chain footprint, if you had to, or a logistics footprint, if you had to look at it on a map and just kind of picture. I mean, these are 24-7, uh, you know, operations. They're going every day of the week. And then as you see on the weekends, they're actually picking up the pace, it looks like. So um, this one is coming out of uh, Washington State down to Phoenix, all right? But notice that it went from El Paso up to Washington, and then it's a return flight, and that was yesterday, okay? But notice where it originated, Laughlin Air Force Base over to El Paso, then El Paso up to Washington State, all right? So 
Okay. In 964 CE. Now, this is one that's been getting my attention because it's technically listed as a cargo bird. And if you look at the close pictures of it, you can see, which is, you know, right in line with what you would expect to see on a cargo bird, there aren't any passenger windows. That doesn't mean they can't put people on these because what they do with these cargo birds is they actually go in and they'll, they'll just take out the skids that are inside the aircraft that are locked and loaded for cargo and they basically put in new skids that have seats sitting on them and they configure them for seats, right? So they just basically are a preloaded cargo door pops out. They take out the cargo stuff. They load in the seating configuration. You see it on uh, Atlas Air does it all the time for moving troops, all right? It's not the best of the world in terms of being able to look out and see what's going on. So if you get vertigo or get disoriented and you're in a plane without windows, uh, that is not a good feeling, uh, but they do it, okay? And so they'll tell you that, oh, we only carry cargo when in actuality they have the ability, uh, the general public, general public doesn't understand that, but they have the ability to basically change in and out. They can push in, um, you know, skids that have seats in there and lock them down and, and basically bring passengers too. So, all right. But this one is one I've been watching because they have been traveling. Notice this one came out of Nicaragua to uh, Laredo, Texas. Okay, that was yesterday. So we get down here and start looking at these flights. So I really find it hard to believe they're bringing cargo uh, unless it's human cargo. Okay, so uh, Laredo down here to Nicaragua. But you can look here. This was uh, they were down here in, in Mexico up to Laredo. Here they are in Toledo, Ohio uh, to Mexico. Laredo to Toledo. So Guadalupe. I mean, these people are flying. I think. This is also an MD-80, so it's, I think they're moving passengers is what I think. This is just another, you know, billable hour, billable flight um, that these guys, Arctic One LLC, are basically being utilized for, okay? So just add that to our quiver of aircraft. All right, now this is actually a Swift, oh wait, no, this is gonna be our V, let me see if I can get this one better. This is our Mexican Airlines. Uh, you can see this one's coming back right now. Both of these are way pretty deep in the U.S. up here near, uh, you know, Michigan, coming all the way down. And of course, notice that one where it's going south of the border. So this is your Mendoza diagonal right here. All right, and so they're coming in right here. So um, if we go look at these, this one went from Laredo down to Guadalupe. It was in um, uh, Finley, Ohio, to Shreveport. Then it went from Oakland which is uh, uh, up in Michigan, that's Oakland, Michigan, Oakland County, uh, down to Laredo and then Oakland down to Laredo. So that's two flights, that's what we're looking at right there on the board. These are live actually happening right now. So everything that's listed right here is happening as we speak. Then uh, we've got uh, N629SW San Antonio over to Greensboro. And so that one took place, uh, landed 14 hours ago. So that's bringing in some fresh legs into old Greensboro, North Carolina. All right, and for Friday, that thing started out. It was in, oh, let me get backed up here, San Antonio over to Brownsville, Brownsville to Honduras, and then Honduras up to San Antonio, San Antonio over to Greensboro. So there's your, you got some, a bunch of Hondurans that just got welcome to Greensboro, North Carolina. All right, now this is going to be Laughlin Air Force Base, and I'm going to point this out because this is the one that Tucker Carlson uh, was lighting up. Now notice today, this is actually the departure board for today. This one's rolling out of El Paso. And uh, it's one we just looked at here. I'm just gonna click on it, we'll come back to it. Uh, landed, well, actually landed 22 hours ago. So that's left on the board, Del Rio to El Paso. Okay, so we saw that one on there. But let me point something out because yesterday as I was looking through the board, I was shocked at the amount of aircraft coming into a military base with illegals on it. That should make us all kind of wonder what is going on. But this was just Friday. So Thursday and Friday, sorry. But uh, here's one that uh, arrived from San Antonio, one arrived from Houston, one arrived from Miami, one arrived from Phoenix to Laughlin Air Force Base. All right, then we've got it departing. Go look at their departures. Where did these planes go on Friday, Thursday and Friday? Here's our Thursday, Friday. So Thursday, first bird went to Alexandria, 72 hour holding facility. Second bird went straight to Columbus, Georgia. 
Next bird went to San Antonio and the other bird went to El Paso. All right. So, um, very interesting. You can see them all over the board. This was, this is a couple week run, but every one of these little S SWQs right here, right here, all of these stacked, these last four, all departing, those are all Swift Air, all right? That's a commercial flight landing at a military, U.S. military installation with illegal immigrants on board, all right? So let that resonate and sink in. And I think the only way we're going to fix this is actually to go basically start putting in, um, we're just going to have to speak our voice, man. We're going to have to do whatever power, the power of the pen, we're going to have to start putting in, um, you know, petitions to have uh, people like Ted Cruz and Greg Abbott, and I know the Republicans, um, but uh, they're not representing us. And so uh, we're going to have to start, you know, going after them and saying, hey, you know, we're going to look for impeachment hearings or, or have them removed from office because they're not upholding, um, you know, they're not doing what we, the people want. They're not representing us and we have the right to recall them. And so um, they're not going to do it. We'll find somebody else that will. So I think that is our method or a mechanism, at least for now, the best that we can do is basically uh, start calling for them to be removed from office. And so get to it. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, otherwise they're going to keep doing it. And if it, if we don't start making a stand now, Next thing is they're going to, because they're not listening to us, well, you know, when, when we really need them, like for guns or, or Second Amendment, um, are they going to listen to us then too? No, nope, probably not. So, all right. So here we go. Um, now we're going to get over to the spy birds real fast. Uh, this is actually our 50348 that's actually en route. It's flying on a, on a weekend, which is pretty unusual, but you can see uh, it's up here running routes above the clouds, 6,800 feet. And uh, that is a spy bird. So when they get up here and they just start doing that circling like that, uh, remember they got a 20 mile radius. They're using a stingray and dirt box and uh, 20 miles in any direction. Doesn't have to necessarily be here. This could be their center point and 20 miles out radius uh, where they can actually collect cell tower data, become the middleman. And if they have stingray, um, they can actually push data out. All right, so they can actually take over your device. They can do all that other stuff. So remember that if you live in that area. Uh, but this is one of many, many. They're doing it every day all over the U.S. They're using balloons and R-135s and AWACS and little small tiny Cessnas, anything. Um, we just don't see it because you just, you got to catch them in the act to find them, all right? Or no tail number. So, all right. So that's going to be our two spy birds for today. Now, this is actually going to be our Homeland um, Security, uh, head of Homeland Security. This is C-101. You can see they fly. What they do is they actually fly on these Coast Guard birds. It's a Gulf Stream. It's a beautiful aircraft. Uh, but that's the aircraft that they fly on. That's um, the branch of service that actually represents them and uses their planes. So uh, that one landed two days ago up there in Michigan. All right, and so um, let me see. Now that is not Michigan. That bad dude flew around a little bit and came back to Michigan. So it's kind of a, it's kind of misleading because you see it uh, took off from there, landed there. So uh, you can see it looks like it did some touch and goes. Now could that have been a, a quick dump on the runway and then took off again? I don't know. I mean, this altitude thing gets a little squirrely when you get down to that zero level. The airspeed is an indicator. It looks like it did a touch and go based on that speed. So remember yellow line is speed. And uh, yeah, that looks, that would be uh, probably about on a final, then roll back out. Um, okay, so Reagan National up to Michigan, then Michigan back to Michigan. So that's, that is gonna be C-101. And then let's get over here, which is, that, that is just kind of an unusual pattern now if they were doing a test top they typically aren't going to go out and do that kind of thing now maybe that's a touch and go here touch and go here then back i don't know uh that may be actually may align look here if i get my screen my mouse to cooperate and work together um yeah that looks like two two different touch and goes so there's one here that's probably up here and then this one do that would be probably over here and then this is actually returning to base all right that makes sense but 
it's kind of strange for a maintenance hop. So that's definitely something else. All right, C202, that's actually going to be the deputy of Homeland Security. That's the sidekick. And 18 hours ago, went from D.C. out to Los Angeles. So that one's out here in L.A. All right, we'll keep our eye on them. Uh, but for Friday, so that landed yesterday, but you can see that one took off out of, wow, this is pretty nice. Uh, they were kicking it in Hawaii. Left Hilo, went out here to San Diego, then flew all the way back to Reagan. Uh, four hours and then flew from Reagan back to uh, LA so it's a lot of seat time so been pretty active all right now let's talk about this naval exercise real fast because this is the largest uh, naval exercise in 40 years all right now if you get a chance and you want to see some pretty interesting things this uh, this website's called globalsecurity.org and there's pretty good information in here in terms of intelligence and, and uh, homeland security, space stuff. It's all in there, weapons of mass destruction. Notice this is actually a write-up by the Iranian press TV on August 4th. It's not really pro-American. It actually is talking about uh, that we are in the process of doing this giant amphibious war games, the biggest one in 40 years. It spans across 17 time zones. Um, but then it talks about some modeling done by the Chinese and how they basically whooped our butts uh, in, a, in war games uh, based on their models. And so I was just, when I read it, I was like, wow, this is interesting. But uh, they go into uh, kind of the size and, 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 you know, magnitude of what we're you know, doing in this war game. And it's 36 ships and then 50 virtual units are scheduled to take part of these games. And it's a sixth fleet. All right. so. There is that. Now, also, this is actually the write-up over here on Navy.com, which is our uh, Navy.mil, sorry. Um, and this is uh, August 6th, so this is an official public release from the Navy. But they're talking about the logistics of it and how this is doing a, a large-scale uh, exercise, all right, and give you kind of the names of the boats involved. But uh, really focusing here, at least in the, in the uh, press release, uh, focusing in, we see the dates August 3rd through the 16th. So this is, we got another couple of weeks or uh, about eh, nine more days of this. All right. Uh, but um, it's interesting. This is just showing them in terms of support. So you can see this, the logistics uh, press release, right? Talking about bringing fuel and food and, and things of that nature into this. Now, when you start talking about 17, um, time zones across the US, you remove six of them, okay? So if, I, if I'm counting the time zones across the top here, right, it literally goes the entire span of the US with the exception of, it stops right here in the Russia area, all the way over to basically, you know, in, you know Russia and China are basically, that whole area is, is kind of void, right? So, doesn't appear that we're doing anything in these general time zones, but everything outside of that. So I imagine here in the Pacific, the Middle East. Um, now that's why the reason I pointed that out is because in the U.S., even though we've got you know these time zones across the U.S., from an aircraft perspective, I'm not seeing a lot of activity that would indicate the Navy is active, at least airborne across the U.S. What I'm seeing is a lot of, I mean, it may be, you know, all ocean stuff related. So just pointing that out. The reason I say that, here's a data point for you, is because we've got a lot of heavies moving, which means there's a lot of equipment and supplies being pushed across the United States. And uh, if it's not related to this exercise, then it would be related to something else. Because um, like I said the other day on Wednesday, I counted from... Uh, noon until 7 p.m. when we did our live sit rep, and we had 107 uh, aircraft, uh, supply craft moving across the U.S. That was C-17, C-130s, and C-5s, and that was U.S. only, and that's that's a lot, okay? And so you can see today, this is pretty heavy. I, I watch these things on Saturdays, and I don't see this much activity, uh, but again, now, when you see the CNVs and, and names like that for these aircraft, so like this one, for example, that's going to be Navy, right? So there are some Navy flights that are up, 
But for the most part, what I'm seeing moving, like this Slam, Slam 92 C17, I mean, this is a, it's a cargo bird, right? And it carries and moves a lot, a lot, all right? And so we got quite a few of those. And I'm seeing a lot of two ships and three ships of C-130s running, like these hives right here, all right? Um, those are German aircraft, so don't pay too much attention to that. That's not uncommon for them to be here in the U.S. But these AWACS right here, now remember the AWACS, not only are they doing um, air traffic control, but they also have the ability to do spy stuff on ground, all right? And that's a recent find. I, like I said, I wasn't aware of that before. But uh, here's another one. You can see this one is... <laughs> Now that jagged line is probably not very accurate. I'm sure it's a little smoother, but it's the way it's it's been picking up its signal. Okay, but C-17s. I mean, we still got a lot of heavies uh, moving around the U.S. There's another one. Looks like it's coming out here from the uh, the East Coast. Uh, I did see a three ship of C-130s not too long ago, and I've since lost them that were rolling out of the Arkansas area headed northbound. And we've got a handful of uh, helos, you know, H-60s and stuff up. And so those are not going to be Navy birds. They're going to be probably U.S. Army uh, for the most part. All right. Maybe some Air Force guys in there. But, uh, but yeah, we get into San Diego. Now, this is where I would expect to see if we had a bunch of Navy stuff going on. You know, you may see some C-130s here that are uh, the U.S. Navy stuff. But there's not like a bunch of airborne activity going on. So I don't know if they're just not, you know, broadcasting or, or what the deal is. But you got a C-5 rolling out. That's actually coming out of, man, Mercy, where is that coming out of? Tampa. No, it's coming out of Patrick Air Force Base. That's, <laughs> that's a haul right there. Mercy. So I don't know what they're bringing out of Patrick, but uh, that looks to be on a heading towards uh, Hawaii. And uh, now that is a Navy bird. All right. And then there's another C-17. Looks like it's coming out of Alaska. But a uh, fair amount of heavies. So pay attention to that because uh, what we're looking for, and the reason I'm saying that is because we want to keep a close eye on, you know, it's not just about Guantanamo Bay. It's not just about this stuff coming across the border. Uh, when I start seeing a lot of heavy movement, um, I start watching other articles and news that is out there relative to staging of things, okay? And so that's where we want to start watching, keep our eye on it, because if they're moving a lot of big, big pieces of equipment or lot of troops uh, we want to start paying attention to that okay and so again this is pretty heavy for a Saturday don't see that kind uh, that's going to be again that's your that's your night watch up over the U.S. Uh, but we don't see that kind of activity usually on a weekend so um, it's going to be your looking glass looks like it's headed up here in the northeast uh, for those not familiar with looking glass that's an airborne command system now that I would expect to see tied to war games okay it's got that little doghouse on the top um, cause this thing controls, uh, it's command and control for, uh, ICBMs, uh, airborne command and control. All right. So air refuelers, C-130. So, all right. And that I think is going to do it for today. Now we will be back Monday, 7 PM with our regular sit, uh, live sit rep on YouTube. Um, and then we'll keep our eye on it because, uh, my understanding is there's some stuff going on up in DC for training um, relative to military and uh, medical field. And so uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on that and see if, there, see if it flushes out, see if we see any traffic that would indicate that is actually taking place. But uh, we'll keep our eye on it. This is uh, interesting times for sure. And uh, like I said, just stay frosty out there. All right, anything changes, I'll pop on live if anything major changes. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys Monday night. You guys be safe out there. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear at monkeyworksus.com.